So I did good afternoon. So welcome to Health Dialogue by BDMS. Uh, today we are here to talk about head and neck cancer screening safe lives. Um, we are focusing on many parts of the body and the common word is cancer. But today we are here with our doctor, Dr. Tidarat Watanyuta. She's otolaryngologist from ENT Center. So I'm Dr. Tidarat from ENT Neutral Department. Um, in general, my work is about treating the patient with the uh, wide range of head and neck condition, include the ear infection, the throat infection, allergy, some swallowing or voice problem. But I also take care of the patient who have the tumor in the area of head and neck or even head and neck cancer patient. Yeah, it sounds like every time I think about ENT, when I sneeze, when I catch a cold, I have to go there or many people also think about something like that. But since I've been talking to her and what we have to focus more and very important is something close to us, but we never forget is head and neck cancer. So we would like you to give us more detail and how should we uh, focus on our health in this part? Yes, and today I would like to talk about the topic about oral head and neck cancer screening that can save your life. The first thing I'd like to start with the general background information about head and neck cancer. Mm -hmm. um, there are uh, 550,000 new cases of oral head and neck cancer worldwide in 2019 and resulting in more than 300 deaths each year. And we found that men uh, develop head and neck cancer around two to four times more often than women. Oh, so half a million uh, last year yes. who got yes. this head and neck cancer. Yes and most or more chance for the, 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 man. the man. So why is that? Um, because the man has a higher risk factor about the lifestyle and yeah. Mm. Then the, that I will, will talk later about this problem. We have to focus on yes. that information to yes. avoid the, yeah. the risk. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. And you know, the head and the cancer is the sixth most common form of cancer in the world. And despite uh, advancement in diagnostic and treatment, the, mm. the prognosis remains poor with the low average survival when compared to other neoplasm. And we found the people over the age of 40 are at the higher risk for head and neck cancer. <gasps> in the other way, the head and neck cancer are uh, often diagnosed more often in among patients over 50 years old. Okay. 40 means step into dangerous area, but 50 are more dangerous. Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, because the head and neck areas, that is a different type of cancer that arising in the, the mucosa of the mouth, nose, and throat. Mm -hmm. That includes the malignant disease that begin in the bodily of head and neck lesion. Uh, that includes the nasal cavity, the mm. sinus, oh, and mm -hmm. oral cavity include mouth lining, the lips, tongue, gum, mm. Mm. also the pharynx far that mainly divided into three parts. The, the nasal pharynx is the upper part of the throat behind your nose. Mm -hmm. The oral pharynx is the middle part of the throat the throat behind your mouth includes soft palate and tonsils. Oh, there are many chairs. And the hypopharynx is the area that is the bottom part of uh -huh. your throat uh -huh. before the opening of the esophagus. Oh. And the, the other structure in the head and neck regions is the larynx that is your voice box includes vocal cord and epiglottis. And in the head and neck area also contain the Glands, salivary glands, and thyroid glands, mm. and we found that more than ninety percent of head and neck cancer are squamous cell carcinoma arising in the epithelial layer in your oral cavity, pharynx, and larynx. Mm -hmm. Oh, you must be busy enough. There are many organs in the head and also neck can can get cancer. Yes, and it's not uh -huh. only in your mouth that easy easy observe and look, but is the hidden area that is so deep and okay. difficult to, to, to check. That yes. why you say screenings can save lives. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. okay. Um, because head and neck cancer 
uh, is like a epithelial environmentally exposure to genotoxic agent. You mm -hmm. are more likely to develop cancer in the ketonic area if you ex expose to all of these risks. The first thing is the most important tobacco use. Around 80% of head and cancer risk is estimated due to smoking mm -hmm. or other tobacco product use. Um, you have increased risk about five to 10 times higher in current smoker than non-smoker. And the risk can up to 25%, 75 times oh. in heavy sm smokers. Oh, yes. Heavy smoker mean you smoke more than two two packs of cigarettes ah, for 20 years. I mean, that's small one. Uh -huh, okay. One pack has 20. Okay. That if you smoke more than yeah. 40 cigarettes per day, so you are a heavy smoker. Yes, yes. Even you are slim. Yeah. <laughs> you can be a heavy smoker. <laughs> and uh, the uh, tobacco include all types, ah. um, like a pipe, cigar, cigarette, or even smokeless tobacco. Ah, yes. yeah, many people are prying in different way. How about the electricity? Also, cigarette? because the like contact, the heat and the carcinogenic ah. from from smoke. Yeah, also I thought cause. that it's, it's help because so many people think it, they're not smoking, but they still like to, to have something like and try to reduce the, mm -hmm. the general cigarette. But it's also dangerous. Yes. Okay. Yes, and uh, the second major risk factor is alcohol use. You have mm -hmm. higher risk about five to six times in people who have five or more alcoholic drink per day. That means five more than five brick five beers per day. You mean a can? A can. Yes. Ah, so more than five can per day. Yeah, it's heavy drinker. Mm, yes, <laughs> heavy smoker. But if you do both. You yeah. have to you have to realize that you are in 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 danger. Yes. Uh, especially if you are over 40 or 50 years old and you're heavy smoker, heavy drinker. Mm, okay. Yes. <laughs> both, uh -huh. both but should be the way out. <laughs> <laughs> it should be the way out. Both mm -hmm. tobacco and alcohol use mm -hmm. has synergistic low. That means it's up the list high high to about 35 times. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> because some also drink and smoke and yeah, drink and like, smoke. Like the alcohol act as the so way to improve permeable of the mucosa and more absorption of the carcinogenic mm -hmm. agent inside. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I apply a lot of alcohol, but only on my hands. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, right? That's okay. <laughs> and the next risk factor is bitter nut um, chewing, especially mm -hmm. in Asian population. But oh, the list is up to the grandmom activity. Yes, ah. <laughs> it's the risk of oral cavity, oral cancer. Yes. Yeah, I heard about that when I was young, and yeah. there are many people talking about uh, cancer in the mouth yes. or mouth cancer because the the local people, especially uh, on the countryside, they use bitterness a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's like everyday activity. Oh. So, okay. Yes, and the next important risk factor is about viral infection. Um, the HPV or human papilloma virus uh, has increasing evidence of related, related to oral and oral pharyngeal cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, increasing worldwide. HPV. Yeah, it's a sexual transmitted viral virus. Ah, uh, yes. okay. But you also will suggest us how to how, how to take care and also how to do the screening. Yes, okay. and the, the around the eight, eighty-five to ninety percent is HPV type sixteen, mm -hmm. and the risk is of oropharyngeal cancer is about fifteen times greater in patients who have oral HPV infection, and the next viral is Epstein Barr virus or mm -hmm. EBV mm -hmm. is associated with the nasopharyngeal cancer. Mm -hmm. The risk of nasopharyngeal cancer about 35, 33 times higher mm -hmm. in patient with EBV infection. Okay, yes. I wish you will give us more detail later. Yes, okay. and uh, the last one is uh, the patient who have history of previous head and neck cancer in one side, 10% mm -hmm. can develop the second primary tumor in the head and neck in five years. Mm -hmm. 
So the risk factor, uh, the last one that you just mentioned is about the cancer that, that I mean, from, from family history. No, for, for when, personal when history. You have personal history, when ah. you have one site and you get treatment, ah. after that, in five years, you can develop the, the second one in, oh. the, in the other area in the head and neck. Will it repeat in the same site too? Can be, can be, can be ah, okay. like local or the different one. Okay. And the, the cause, Maybe the share risk factor because it's the same area to contact with the carcino carcinogen. Mm. Then it share the risk factor. Mm. Yes, and some patients have like a genetic susceptibility to mm. to certain type of of this cancer, and also some patient has a immunodeficiency after get the chemotherapy or mm. radiotherapy after the first treatment. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I think many many check must be done. Uh, you mean yes, the screening yes, must be done, especially in this group. Uh huh. But but if someone in the family has cancer, maybe other part of the body, is it possible to to have the cancer, but in head and neck, um, or only be only in head and neck? If you you have family history of head and neck cancer, you mm. can have the risk of head and neck cancer, such ah. as the thyroid. Mm. Yeah, and nasopharynx so like that. Okay, yes. so I think uh, it's also time to talk to the relative. Uh, yes. <laughs> Maybe we have to to take care of each other and also get more information. Maybe one in the family has that kind of history, and uh, we have to, especially those who has family history, and they have to focus more. Yeah, yes. and also uh, do the screening like regularly, like yes. yearly, for yeah. example. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I really want to know more information. Yes, okay. <laughs> it sounds scary. Yes. <laughs> okay, and when does you should suspect you have early signs of head and neck cancer? Okay, if observe you, yourself, yes, listen carefully. Yes, uh -huh. and if you feel painful or difficult swallowing, mm -hmm. that persists in more than two mm -hmm. weeks, or you have foul smell breathing, mm -hmm. have a wide change in your voice, such as persistent hoarseness, mm -hmm. or uh, feel swelling in your throat, you have lump in your neck, your mouth, your mm -hmm, jaw, mm -hmm. or persistent mouth ulcer, or white or red patch in your mouth, and or persistent rocket nose, especially only one sign that is mm. not going away. Mm. Yes. I think this one, uh, we are suggestion to observe ourselves. So that mean early in the morning, we always brush our teeth yes. and maybe only wash our face, but yeah. we never forget in detail, but now there are many informations that you gave us and we have to focus more. Maybe we have to open our mouth a little bit wider to, to check ourselves every morning and also touch yourself, yeah, and check yes, yourself. Yes. But I know that is not enough. Yes, mm. also have their other signs, symptoms that you need to observe. Mm -hmm. um, the next In the one. next slide. Yes. Uh -huh. Like you have frequent nose breathing or decrease or loss of smell. You have ear pain or healing loss in mm -hmm. one side or have noisy breathing or shortness of breathing. That is the size of at one step mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. Or you have persistent, persistent cough or weight loss. Yes. Mm. Uh, that, that problem I never have. Yeah. <laughs> the weight <way> loss. <laughs> yes. Okay. okay. Yes. But you said one side. But if both sides, because because the tumor in the head and neck area usually develop in one in side. one area, yes. Okay, both side maybe. For example, I have problem with hearing. Maybe it's because of something <laughs> noisy and and block me for a while or something like yes, that. Yes, or really big tumor. Oh, okay. that obstruct both. <laughs> mm, okay. Yes. Anyway, yeah. if you you cannot smell like in the past, you mm -hmm. cannot hear like in the past, you have to check yourself. Yes. Yeah, but but maybe you need the equipment and machine to do that. Uh, yeah. You cannot check by yourself. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. And then about the, then we talk about the head and neck screening mm -hmm. program. Okay. Next. Okay. The aim of head and neck cancer screening is mm -hmm. uh, uh, for early diagnosis. So actually, a better survival because early head and neck cancer have non-specific signs symptom. Mm -hmm. The majority of newly diagnosed head and neck cancer right now, around seventy to ninety percent, 
uh, present with an advanced state. That uh, means only 30% come to present with the uh, early stage. Uh, that means someone, just 30% of the patients, yes, of your patients, come that with early they, stage. Disease. Early stage means they detect themselves by checking themselves yes. and come to and feel like they need the check. Mm, yes. Ah. Yes. And, and we found that the, the delay in the diagnosis has mm. shown to be increased in advanced state, increased uh, morbidity and mortality. And this five year survival is related to stage at the diagnosis. Like when mm -hmm. you come with the early stage, that tumor restricted at the primary site, the, the five year survival is about 80%. Mm -hmm. If compared to only 40% in the late stage disease, that tumor spread to the lymph node or the distant organ. Oh, I don't want to hear that. Yes. Uh -huh. And the second aim is we want to identify the risk patient mm -hmm. and to, to avoid further exposure to their risk. The last aim is for inquire the patient about the risk factor and hope for avoid cause burden, mortality, and incident to have head and neck cancer. I think, um, if possible, uh, we can go back to 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 the the fifth slide, slide number five. That one that you told us, comment slide that that show us why we have to stay away from drinking. Mm, number five. Ah, ah number five. Yes. Yeah, this one because for those who who said, "Oh, I cannot quit smoking, I cannot stop drinking, and I still do both," or I still have like an affair with the others, kind of, they they have to come and do the screening. Yes. If yes. they cannot stop doing that kind of thing. But if they stop, mm. do you think they are safe? Yes. Uh, it can reduce the risk. Reduce the risk, yes. but, but, but it still can happen, right? How often should we do the screening? Normally once a year. Oh, uh, once yes. a year. So if I book checkup program, if I'm older than 40 years yeah. old, I should request to come to ENT center yes. to see you. Yes. And uh, should I say just e, uh, just uh, cancer check or should I? Yes, you can say like ah, that. Ah, okay. Yeah. So don't forget that. I think uh, that is very important because I think if we have to continue working, but we have tumor somewhere mm -hmm. in our head or neck, and I think we cannot continue working well. And I mean, the checkup maybe cost less than of course, yeah. The treatment, mm, uh, I cannot. Sure. Nothing yes, to compare. Yes, yes, yes. Nothing to compare. Yes. Okay. And yes. And what does the doctor will do if you come in the head and neck screening yes. program? Can I just call and do one one uh, cancer check? I mean, not not the other annual check. Maybe I have done that already this year. Mm. But can I call your center and come for a cancer check? Yes. Yes. Ah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Yes. Okay. And. We will do the, the doctor will do complete head and neck examination mm -hmm. uh, by inspect, inspection for patient from nostrils, oral cavity, pharynx, larynx, mm -hmm. and also how patient at your lymph node, mm -hmm. the thyroid gland mm -hmm. and salivary gland. Mm -hmm. And then the next step we will do we video nasopharyngolaryngoscope. Mm -hmm. oh, the, the name the name is very long. so long yeah yeah forget it <laughs> okay just it's just it's the camera high quality image video oh, scope video scope. and small diameter only 3.7 millimeters we pass mm -hmm. transnasally to the mm -hmm. nose and nasopharynx after vasoconstricting and anesthetic agent has been mm -hmm. sprayed or packaged okay. and then you feel feel Okay. 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 Uh, it's not just go straight into your yes. nose, but also uh, she will help you to make you feel numbed before yes, doing yes. that. Maybe just a little bit discomfortable. I think. Yes. Yes. And as uh -huh. the scope pass through the nose, and so far we're looking for mucosal lesion or mm. any abnormality. Then gently at once the scope down to the oral cavity and and hypopharynx and mm. examine all like your structure. Mm -hmm. And then slowly remove the scope. Then finish. How, how deep you go in? How, how, how long is it? How I mean, long? A, a lot, I think about 10, 15 centimeter. Cent Just centimeters. Up above, <laughs> yes, above the, the, uh, the vocal cord here. Okay. Until the middle of the neck here. Mm -hmm. Yes. I have to say it's a little bit discomfortable, but 
it's better if you leave it and never touch it and never shake it and you have tumor and yeah. that's not comfort for for 100 for sure yes okay after that we will do like a take a history about the risk factor and mm -hmm. get the education about association between head and neck cancer with mm -hmm. the risk for reduce your risky behavior yes okay. so bear in mind tell the doctor all the truth yeah yeah for example if you drink like five cans of beer a day but don't say you drink only two <laughs> you have to tell her the facts and then Uh, yes. then you can uh, do the treatment plan or the healthy plan together. Yes. Okay. And who should be screened? Who, yes. Normally all adults, especially who are older than 40 years old. And the mm -hmm. most important group is a high-risk patient, mm -hmm. including who have smoking, drinking, bitter not chewing, or who have risk factor with HPV infection. Mm -hmm. And uh, American Association of Oral and maxillofacial surgeons suggest to or, or individual should have yearly examination of head and neck with doctor. Yes. Let's say you mentioned the age 40 plus, right? Yes, and the so, risk group. I think all adults mean all 40 plus who has head and neck. You <laughs> have to do the check. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. And the, the mainstay of head and neck cancer prevention, we will talk about how to prevent. Okay, that's good. Ah, uh, uh, the main step is identifying risk factor and minimizing all risks. Okay. The, yeah, you can mm. reduce your risk if you stop stop using all tobacco products. Yes. Yes. Okay. The quitting smoking can significantly reduce risk if you have smoking cessation for five years. The risk will reduce around fifty percent. Okay. Yes. And avoiding alcohol use as the second major risk factor of head and neck cancer. And you can reduce your risk of HPV infection. Mm. Right now, uh, they have the HPV vaccine that mm. can that is proved to prevention of certain type of head and neck cancer. I think uh, stop or quit smoking. Avoiding alcohol is quite clear, yes, yes. but can you give more information about reducing risk of HPV infection? Yeah. Uh, if you want the the human vaccination, we can just go for it. And is there any age limitation or yeah, how is it? Yeah. Uh, about HPV vaccination. Who uh, should have that vaccination? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Normally better in, in patients who are younger than 15 years old. That oh. is the most effective. Ah, yes, and you okay. get two doses separate about around uh, six months after the first. Boy dose. and girl. Yes, both. Yes. Ah, yes, okay. and the patient who are around sixteen to forty-five year. Mm. Yeah, that need to get three doses. So two doses for those under fifteen years yes, old. Yes. But if they already got two doses. Then when they are 16, no, no, they need, have... no need, it's lifelong. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought I have to bring, uh, for example, my son for the yes. second round. Yes. No, once in a lifetime. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and the people who are older than 45 years old, the not will be not as effective life mm, in the young mm -hmm. because they already exposed to the HPV virus already. Then mm. Maybe it's cannot prevention. No prevention. Maybe it's just it need to just about risk benefit like that. Okay, but where is it from? Let me uh, ask you. Like yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I know nothing uh, because I, I, I need from, this information for my yes, audience. Yes, like a sexual transmitted disease uh -huh. infection. Yes, and you need to limiting limiting your sexual partner. Also, use a mm -hmm. condom during sex. It's also help for prevention HPV infection. Uh, this topic is 18 plus, but okay, we are talking yes. about reducing risk. We have to tell you frankly. Yes. Okay. Yeah. As uh, our doctor just suggests, uh, yeah, uh, should reduce the number of and also using condom is help yeah. a lot. And for those who are under 45, you still can get the vaccination done. Yes. Yeah. Just contact uh, Bangkok Hospital to get. 1719 and I think uh, just give us a call and, and ask for it and you can come in for the for the shot yeah, mm -hmm. and the, the last one that everyone can do is 
keep your oral hygiene and visit the dentist regularly. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And to summarize, okay, I, I think having a cancer screening is so important. And if the survival is better if you have earlier diagnosis. Once you come in the screening program, the doctor will do complete head and neck examination, mm -hmm. and you will be informed about the risk reduction behavior about HPV vaccination as mm -hmm. the primary primary prevention for developing mm -hmm. head and neck cancer. Mm -hmm. If the doctor finds any suspicious lesion, mm -hmm. you will get further investigation, mm -hmm. such as tissue biopsy, to get early definite diagnosis. Yes. An early intervention for curable mm -hmm. disease. Mm -hmm. We don't want our patient to get an advanced disease or mm -hmm. metastasis disease or in the palliative stage in since the first time of the diagnosis or get the expensive multimodality care. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the last thing that I want to remind you is uh, uh, um, head and neck cancer. Early diagnosis can save your life and the screening will be done by our NT doctor mm. and take a time, only 15 to 20 minutes. And and the price is not high, right? Less than 5,000 baht. Okay. Yes. It's less than 5,000 baht. It can be done within less than an hour, but you will be safe and sound. I have to say, because uh, in the part time, many people focus only on, on head and neck, but only on the beauty. You know, many people spend a lot of money for kind of cosmetic and uh, lotions and many different things that will keep you look nice, handsome and beautiful. And also the dental problem will be checked and done for beauty. And also we have to use this part of the body talking to other people to communicate. But I wish you focus on the health too, because for example, she, uh, Dr. Tidarat also mentioned, we can observe something, but not everything that it's behind yes. the nose, behind the, yes. yeah. So like that, we need uh, the, the machine and assistant of our specialist. And uh, you can just make uh, uh, an appointment with uh, ENT center by call 1719 and say that you want to make a reservation for cancer check. Yeah, yes. especially uh, focus on neck, head and neck. Yeah, uh, early detect or screening can save your life. Okay, we stay healthy together. Yes. Thank you so much, Thank Dr. Tidara. Thank that. you for the information. So informative. And I think we will keep connect. And um, next month, uh, we will not miss each other, but I will see you again in December. Thank you for watching and uh, be our friend. Stay tuned. If you have any question, just contact 1719 or uh, scan this QR code and be our friend. Send us your questions and I'll see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.